Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this week's video we're going to be looking at the latest update to Elemento and that's the 1.5 update. Now this is a pretty major update because they've added quite a few new features in there including things like enhancements to the interface, some new Z-index interface options and the ability to go back and roll back to previous versions if you have a problem when you update to the latest version of Elemento in the future. So in this video I'm going to go over and show you some of those new additions, the key ones that I think are probably the most important and we'll look at some of the other things in a little bit more detail later on in future videos. But to start off with, let's take a look at the key updates in version 1.5. Now it's important to note before we kick this video off that this update is not to the Pro version, this is specifically in the free version which you need to have installed to use the Pro features. So you're going to get the benefits of all these updates whether you're a Pro user or you're using the free version of Elementor, which I think is pretty cool. So let's start off by looking at this thing that gives us the ability to roll back if we find we have a problem and we update to a new version of Elementor in the future. Now to access this feature all you need to do is come into the admin section of your WordPress install, come down to the Elementor section on the left hand side and you'll see you've got the option for tools. If we click and open that up you can see we've got a couple of different tabs on there and the one we're looking for is version control. Now if we click on there you can see we've got a couple of options. We've got the ability to roll back to a previous version and you can see we can roll back version 1.410 which I think is pretty cool. So if you do find you have a problem when you update Elementor, maybe conflicting with the future plugin you've got installed in there, any other reason and you find that this new version doesn't work for whatever reason you can quickly and easily roll it back to a previous version that you know was working. I think that's a really cool feature. We've also got the option to become a beta tester, so if you want to be kept up to date with the bleeding edge of the latest updates for Elementor, then you can enable that and then you'll be notified every single time there's a new update, whether it's an official full update or a beta update, and then you can decide whether you want to install that and test out any new features or updates in a beta version prior to a full release. Again, if you're a developer or someone that likes to be kept on the bleeding edge and you want to keep up to date with exactly what's going on, I think that's a pretty cool feature. So another thumbs up for Elementor there to give you that option. So that's the first thing in this 1.5 update. Let's now jump over to the interface itself and see what's been enhanced in there. Okay, so I've got Elementor now already activated on a page, nothing else on there, and you'll see it looks pretty much the same as it always has. But if we come in and we add in a new section, for example, and we choose to have a layout, and we'll just drag and drop some items in there. But before we do, you can see that when we mouse over, we've now got a slightly tweaked interface. You can see we've now got all the options for doing things like removing a section, saving a section as a template, to add a new section, which is a new feature in there, which we'll look at in a moment, to duplicate and also to come in and edit the section. So you'll see there a couple of new features and a new layout in there for you. We've also got the option then when we come into the actual element itself, the edit column for this example, you'll see we've now got a refined interface in there with all the same options, just some nice little graphical tweaks that help you work a little bit more efficiently with Elementor. Now then, one of the things we've got added in is, before we always had to come in and say add a new session or add a template, but we don't need to do that now, because that's always at the bottom, we may want to add something a little bit further up within a design we've already been working on. We can now easily do that by clicking on the add section button that's part of any of the different sections we've got available inside the design we're working on. So if I click on that, you'll see that automatically pops up above the element we've chosen this time. We can now go in and add a new section or add a template in from there. So again, one of those just simple little enhancements that's going to make sure that your life working with Elementor is going to be much quicker and easier. Great to see that they're looking at focusing on making sure the interface is as optimized as possible for the way that most people work. So again, one of those great little features has been added in there to make life a little bit easier. On top of that, they've also improved the ability to work with the drag and drop. That's just now a little bit more intuitive when you're working with multiple elements. So let's just go and add a new section in there. We'll do a multi-column option in there. And now when we come up, we want to sort of drag this around. You'll see we now get a much more visual way of seeing exactly where our element is going to be dropped within our structure of our page. Again, just a simple little tweak that can make all the difference when you're working with complex layouts and you're kind of looking to see where the element you're trying to move around is going to end up being. Again, really cool little feature that enhances your workflow.
Okay, so another one of those little enhancements that just speeds up your workflow is the ability now to work with a default element padding. So in other words, every time you add a new element inside Elementor, it's going to have a default 20 pixel padding value set to it to make sure you have a nice bit of space in between each of the widgets in your layout. So to give you an example of that, you can see I've got an image block and I've got some text in there. And you can see we now have this default value set up in there that gives us a nice little bit of a buffer. To change that, which we can do on an individual element basis, we can just select the object we want, come up and we can just change this. So let's say we put this to 50 pixels and you can see directly below that image widget now, the text below moves down with the new spacing value that we've just added into it. But by default, we've got a 20 pixel value in there, which is a great starting point and helps just to make sure that everything lays out just a little bit neater if you don't go in and make any changes manually like I've just done. Again, quick and easy. So another new feature we have in Elementor 1.5 is the ability to set anything to have a hover effect. Now a hover effect is useful when we work with things like buttons or when you're working with things like images that you want to give some kind of feedback to the end user that when they sort of mouse over it, something's going to happen. Well, we can do that now in Elementor on any anything, any widget at all. So let's just take this text block as an example. We'll just select that to make it active. And we'll just jump over to the style option, sorry, the advanced option. We'll come down to background and you can see we now have an option for background normal and background hover. So let's just say for normal, nothing will happen, but we want to set a hover state. So let's click on that. We can now go and do something. We can set the transition, uh, transition duration, or we can go in and do something like a classic change color. We can drop an image in there if we want to, or we can use a gradient effect, anything you want in there. Just for simplicity, we'll just change the color of this and we'll just set it to be blue, for example. And we'll leave everything else as if the transition duration and so on. Now when we take the mouse over, you'll see we have a nice transition between the two different elements. So we've got the normal and the hover. Pretty cool. Very, very easy to work with. So by using that throughout your design, you can very quickly give feedback to the user when they've got something they could interact with, for example, or something you just want to draw attention to when they take their mouse over it or their finger over it if they're using a tablet or something. So pretty cool. And one great new feature, if you deal with more complex layouts where you overlap different elements, as you can see in this example, we've got this text area and we've got the image sort of overlapping it to give it a pretty cool effect. Well, we can now control the Z index of these different items so we can ensure that the element we want to be on top or in the front is in fact in front. So if we find that we've got an issue with there, we can quickly change the Z index and control all those different elements. So let's take a look at how you can do that. For example, oh, let's bring this, this text block now to the front to show you exactly what I mean. All I need to do is come in and choose that column. So we'll just click to activate the column. We'll jump over to the advanced section. You can see the Z index now is on there and you can see it's currently set to one. So if we change that to two, for example, so it now has a higher Z index than the, t the image on the right hand side, you can see now that that forces that particular block to come and stand above the graphic in there. So I hope that kind of makes sense. But the Z index is very, very quick and easy. So we change that back to one and you can see that now positions that behind the graphic that we've got in there. So the drop shadow and everything else takes effect. Very quick and easy, really can get quite creative with this. And this is something we'll take a look at in a lot more detail in its own dedicated video in the future. But for now, I just wanted to show you that new feature because I think it's pretty cool and very, very easy to implement. So the final thing I want to show you now is what they've added into 1.5, and that's the improved mobile editing tools. One of the key things in this is how you can now go in and specify how your different columns are going to interact with the layout based upon the device that you're being viewed on. So for example, we've now got this two column layout. Let's just say, for example, that I wanted to go in and specify that on a mobile device, I wanted these to be one column and I wanted the same on tablets. So I can do that very easily. So I can just come in and choose this first column. You can see we've got under layout, we've got column width in percentage. And you can see we've got the familiar icon that allows us to switch over between the sort of just viewing on everything and then the default values go in there to the ability to go in and swap over and control this on each of the three different types of devices. So let's just come in here. And you can see if I go to tablet, for example, it'll show us a, an exact mock of what it's going to look like. But now what I'm going to do is I want to specify this column is going to take up 100%. You can see as soon as I do that, it changes it now, puts it 100% in there, moves the second column down below, which I can now do exactly the same on there. I can click to control that. 
Make sure I'm on the tablet device and we'll do 100 in there. So we now control exactly how this looks. If I switch back over to a desktop, you can see it goes back into two columns. Jump over to a tablet and you can see it jumps into single column. And we can jump over to the mobile device as well and we can ensure that it's laid out the way we want. If not, we could do exactly the same in there. So you can very quickly and easily customize your layout of the column structure inside any kind of device you want or within Elementor 1.5, which for me is one of those things that when you are working across multiple different devices and you want to get the best layout, having full control over that is something that just makes it's a game changer, to be honest. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. These are the key new features that have been added into Elementor 1.5. This is available as both the free version and also rolls over into the pro version, which you need to have the free version installed anyway. So everybody's going to get access to these new features, which I think is great. You're not being sort of forced to pay for this. So that's pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you found this update and this information I've included in here pretty useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up and smash that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you're going to be purchasing Elementor Pro, please consider using the link in the description below, which is an affiliate link, which means we get a small amount of commission based upon every sale that goes through that, which helps to support the channel and allows us to create more content for you. Well, if you did enjoy the video and you've got any comments or questions or feedback, pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.